Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shadow Dogs to Born Bub Bill for Theme Parks and welcome to a massive Theme Park Newsroom update today. We're going to be looking at the London Resorts uh, planning documents now they've been accepted. Now the big headline from this news update is the fact that the DCO have actually, uh, uh, the application has been accepted uh, for examination. So this is going to be a wonderful addition uh, to the UK. It's getting one step close to exception. We are expecting to see a, to hear a decision of, you know, can we start construction on this? By about May 2022, that's what the sort of uh, deadline is. Sort of here's an exception or rejection. You know, is this project going ahead? Is it not? Uh, so all the years we've been waiting for this, May 2022 is when we'll hear something. I think between February and May we'll hear something about it. Um, so before we look at every single thing mentioned that's been listed on Attraction Source website, so massive shout out to Attraction Source, of course, formerly known as South Parks. And, um, you know, they've got a full article listing everything, what's been mentioned in the 25,000 page document. So stay tuned for all of this because we're going to go through a lot of information today. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, cut the case bell so you never miss another YouTube video, guys. Also, make sure you go in the description down below where not only can you find uh, the link uh, to the source, but also you can find links to TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and also the Discord server where you, yes, you, the Coast Shell fan base, can get involved with the Chal Nation and interact with other Coast Shell fans. Also, links in the description down below for you to submit your video ideas. Use the Google Forms. And for now, guys, sit back, relax, get your Coke. Get your popcorn, sit back and just listen because to, na to today, to now, today, um, me thinks the plan's the thing. And we're in our catch the conscience of the London Resort. And for now, guys, William Shakespeare, Lord rest his soul. And for now, guys, let's have a look at everything mentioned in the London Resort's planning examination that we're expected to hear an exceptional rejection from in 2022. Let's do this. So sit back, guys, and let's listen out. So let's have a look, first of all, at the overview. So the London Resort is designed to cater up to 6.5 million visitors per year with only one gate, the first theme park and main resort complex, open, and then up to 12.5 million visitors per year once gates two um, is in operation with up to 35% of the visitors projected to come from overseas. And, of course, Gate 2 is the second theme park. Although the theme parks will be the main attraction for visitors, the resort also consists of a number of other elements which are detailed in the application. Gates 1 and 2 will incorporate theme park rides and attractions, event spaces, dining options and entertainment venues, which will provide visitors with a wide range of memorable experiences. The theme parks will be open in two phases, comprising a 57 hectare area known as Gate 1 opening in 2024 and a 22.5 hectare area known as Gate 2 opening in 2029, with each phase subdivided into themed zones. These areas will reflect agreements with intellectual properties providers and will include rides, shows and attractions suitable for families, children and the more adventurous thrill-seeking visitor. These will include film, television and computer gaming brands as well as attractions bespoke to the London Resort. The DCR application states the content of the zones will be changed or updated from time to time in line with evolving marketing demand and the planning type applied for incorporates the flexibility to enable this. Retail and amenity facilities include a range of restaurants, cafes and outlets linked to the resort experience will be integrated in both gates. A combination of theatres and indoor and outdoor venues within the theme parks will provide West End quality productions and shorter format shows, showcasing events from the IP providers as well as providing a stage for live comedy acts and concerts. As an actor, I can't wait for that. The gates will also incorporate water features designed as natural systems to work in harmony with sustainable drainage energy to connect through the circular spaces and form focal points between the different themed areas. These features will provide opportunity for visitor interaction with water as well as habitat stepping stones, which is very nice. Each gate will have an external entrance plaza with space for people to gather outside the entrances and provide space for guest services and ancillary commercial use. And each gate will also include a city hall building that will include administrative office, security and first aid and information services for visitors. The DCO application seeks consent for development parameters or the Rochdale 
envelope approach, where the na nature of the proposed development means that some details of the whole project have not been confirmed, for instance the precise dimensions of rising attractions with detailed design being subject to approval by the relevant planning authorities, and the proposed maximum height parameters for building and structures inside gate 1 range from 40 to 100 metres. 131 to 328 feet AOD and between 35 to 65 meters include especially 115 to 213 feet AOD in gate 2. These upper limits are said to enable the construction of tall rides and centerpiece features such as the castle which have been detailed in the plans. So let's have a look then at the plaza. The primary role of the plaza will be to create a strong sense of arrival and orientation with both its design and the inclusion of intelligent signage helping to manage peak flow and bottlenecks to avoid queues and congestion on arrival and departure. It will measure up to 22,500 square meters in area and has been designed for a post-COVID-19 world. Where social distancing can be accommodated efficiently should another pandemic occur. Very, very smart thinking there. A grand faux dash up to 100 meters in diameter with a maximum height of 130 meters is to be located in the middle of the plaza creating a strong sense of arrival and a meeting place and a waypoint within the attraction and beyond. Attractive hedges will border the outer edge of the plaza with the presence of grassy berms that run along both sides planted with wildflowers and seasonal bulbs creating spectacular drifts of colour at different times of the year. An interesting feature to note is that recycled rainwater will be used to create a water feature on the plaza that creates dramatic reflecting pools, a tunable and serviceable feature that can recede to accommodate peak capacity, while also providing the very first visitor to arrive with and last to part with a memorable moment. Flowing lines will create a dynamic paving pattern that breaks up the space and directs people on their journey. And from the plaza, visitors will be directed towards the Convention Center and Esports Coliseum through the market towards the visitor entrance plaza serving gates 1 and 2. At the northwestern corner of the plaza will be a wide bank of steps, known provisionally as the Spanish Steps leading down to Pilgrim's Way. The plaza's fluvial theme will continue down these steps with flowing water and planting, drawing visitors to the lower level in a series of terraces. Now, the boulevard, the market, and the link buildings. Now, this pedestrian thoroughfare will connect the London Resort Terminal via the plaza to the boulevard, the market beyond, and from there to the wider London Resort offer. The boulevard will provide themed retail, dining, entertainment offerings, including a bar and music venue. And as guests cross the plaza, they'll be drawn towards the London Resort Hotel, with its outreaching arms framing the boulevard and main entrance to the London Resort. Graceful sculptural birds suspended in the air are set to create a spectacular foil for addressing lighting that brings them to life as daylight draws to a close. To the northeast of the existing tray line will lie the London Resort Market, the main distribution and collection point for visitors to head off towards and return from the wide range of attractions available. And the market will provide a different form of food and beverage offer in comparison to the plaza, rather like London's famous Borough Market, arranged over two levels while garried seating to facilitate people watching whilst enjoying a bite to eat. Now, what about the hotels? There is going to be Four hotels, that's right, you heard me right ladies and gentlemen, thrill seekers of all ages, four hotels. Four hotels with a total capacity of 3,550 rooms will provide overnight accommodation for visitors and be located in the leisure core close to gates 1 and 2. Now the first resort hotel, the London Resort Hotel, which is the first one, will be the flagship accommodation offering consisting of 800 rooms arranged with in two wings either side of the boulevard linked at basement level one side of the hotel will operate the water park which we'll get onto in a bit for the benefit of the hotel guest and the northern end of the hotel wings would include entrances to a music venue located beneath the market and to a sports bar located beneath the northern end of the water park Hotel 2 will stand within a landscaped setting on the east side of the Pilgrim's Way, a short distance to the south of London Resort Ferry Terminal. The hotel will provide 1,500 rooms and enjoy views over the River Thames and Black Duck Marsh. That's very interesting. Uh, now, Hotel 3, which will be the first of two hotels to open with the second gate in 2029, will consist of 850 rooms and enjoy a pivotal location within the development at the foot of the Pilgrim's Way as it descends from Galley Hill to the north along the east side of the hotel, the chalk cliffs will create a string backdrop and an intimate relationship between the two. 
This hotel will be delivered as part of that gate too, along with Hotel 4, which will open with the second theme park, complementing and enhancing the existing hotels by providing a modest boutique offer. With 400 rooms, it will stand within a landscape setting on the east side of the Pilgrim's Way and to the south of the London Resort Ferry Terminal and to the north of the Coliseum. Now, back in August 2019, it was announced that a company had agreed a partnership with the Radisson Hotel Group, so it remains to be seen if some or all the above hotels will be under the Radisson Group of brands. So it should be interesting to see if all four, or half, or three, or one, or just the first hotel, will be involved with the Radisson Group. Now, I know when you first heard Water Park, ladies and gentlemen, you were like, oh my god, this is happening. Now, the Water Park is designed as an integral part of the London Resort Hotel, which both own and operate it. It will be primarily for the enjoyment of its guests and it will include a range of interlinked swimming pools designed for swimmers of all ages with water slides and a wave machine. The water park will be enclosed under domed structures to ensure year-round comfort for visitors. The water park will have the ability to allow controlled access for non-hotel guests when appropriate through a dedicated entrance located at the southeast corner of the east wing of the hotel splashing good times at the london resort we also have the coliseum a landmark structure within the park dedicated to hosting a range of esports computer gaming events across three key spaces arranged in a vertical stat to provide essential flexibility between functions innovation city will occupy the ground floor lower level a flexible hall demonstrating the best of technology the middle gamers level will be the principal level of entry for visitors to the coliseum with a formal axle relationship to the market this level will be focused on gaming with demonstrations of new technology and software, presentations and live streaming with a core of TV studios for interviews, smaller scale live demonstrations by professional gamers and gaming shows. The upper level will be the Coliseum Spectacular Arena, hosting major events with 2,500 to 3,000 tiered seats arranged over two levels in a 360 degree theatre in the round space. Flexible breakout spaces will surround the arena at both levels. Are we going to see GameFX come here like it did at Thought Park? I guess we'll have to find out. We also have the Conferention Centre, a fusion of conference and convention. The Conferention Centre will be capable of accommodating up to 4,000 seated visitors and use flexibility for concerts, live television productions, exhibitions and conventions. And also, consisting of a number of spaces, the venue will be able to host a range of simultaneous events, ensuring there is something to see at all times, whilst allowing time and space for particular events to be set up and taken down without interrupting the rest of the occupants. Its striking architectural form will be a landmark along Pilgrim's Way with an elevated presence off the market. Now visitors to the attraction will be first greeted by the London Resort Transport Terminal which serves the drop-off and collection point for guests arriving on foot, bicycle, car, taxi, bus, ferry, coach and train. LRCH will insensitive travel to the resort by non-car modes through measures including peripheral ticketing and gate entry strategies. Arranged over two levels, it connects the coach and bus station at ground floor level with the plaza level above, with bridge links to the adjacent multi-storey car park structures to the east. The London car parks will accommodate up to 7,500 vehicles in total, 350 motorcycle parking spaces, with 250 secure cycle parking spaces. They'll be arranged as a linear row of three structures and be phased in construction, with the third structure opening with the second theme park. Public access to the car parks will be from the dedicated dual carriageway from the A2 motorway, which effectively precludes access off the local road network, avoiding associated con congestion. The London Resort Ferry Terminal on the northwest shore of the Swanscombe Peninsula uh, will serve the attraction and surrounding community, providing connections to central London and the London Resort Terminal at Tilbury, using a fleet of high-speed Thames Clipper vessels. The terminal building will shield visitors from the neighbouring London Resort port to the northeast, which be used for good deliveries by river. A 3.1 km people mover route is proposed near the interchange located to the west of Ebbsfleet International Station and the ferry terminal on the Swanscombe Peninsula. The route will incorporate stops at the main restaurant uh, transport interchange adjacent to the resort car parking area and visitor entrance plazas. 
The route will be used exclusively by a dedicated fleet of articul articulated electric people movers, each with a capacity of 100 to 150 passengers, as well as smaller vehicles for staff arriving by rail. Now, also in this is visitor center, a training facility, and staff accommodation. Now, it's proposed that the head of Pilgrim's Way will be anchored by an impressive three-story visitor center, along with a staff training facility and the London Resort Academy. This building will accommodate a wide variety of uses over time, such as promising London Resort during the construction with its commanding views over the future theme park resort. The building will also serve as a focus for the local community, keeping residents and visitors informed on progress and community matters on the run-up to opening. The London Resort Academy will provide training for a wide range of staff to fulfil the diverse employment of opportunities that the London Resort will offer, and the Academy will also encourage career development for those who are already employed within the London Resort with additional training and skills development available. And the staff accommodation on the former Craylands Lane Pit will be the location for the staff accommodation. And these facilities will focus on accommodating the needs of up to employees who may find it difficult to live in the wider area at the beginning of their careers. Up to 500 dwellings will be provided in a phase development with the opening of the first theme park in 2024 and the second in 2029. Now, what about the construction process? Well, basically, Gate 1 is starts on site anticipated to be Q3 2022 for completion and opening in July slash August 2024. Start on Gate 2 anticipated to Q3 2027 for completion on opening during 2029. Now, a more detailed phase in the construction process was set out in the OCMS as follows. Q3 2022, month 1, enabling works. Months 3 to 6 is expected to be demolition, site grading and remediation. Months 6 to 9 will work on utilities and internal road network. Months 9 to 15, starting works on nodes 1 and 2 slash 3, boulevard, the Coliseum, visitor centre and other building structures. The Gate 1 theme park on site beginning will begin in months 15 to 18. Months 18 to 21 will be the construction of individual building structures for Gate 1. Months, uh, months 21 to 24 will be Gate 1 construction ongoing plus building structures progressing, hotels commissioning, visitor centre and training facilities completed. Months 24 to 27 with the final fitting out plus commissioning to all buildings. Months 27 to 30, completion of all buildings and landscaping and external works. Months 30, late 2024, gate 1 and the complex is open. And then months 30 to 33 is the, is the post opening snagging and the conferential centre completion. So overall a very complex um, construction process. Now in terms of funding... Um, they've actually announced on the documents that key to the viability of the project is obtaining the funding necessary to finance it. And LRCH already secured over two thirds of the land for the Keb project site as a result of the options agreement with the Swanscombe Development LLP and Ebsweek Development Corporation. The remaining land is expected to cost £200 million, with the cost included within the estimate total cost of £1.8 billion to bring to operation Gate 1 and the development associated with the initial opening of the park. Subsequent expansion of Gate 1 and the construction of Gate 2 and additional hotel facilities is estimated at £0.7 billion. Now, obviously, LRCH intends to meet the initial project development cost through equity and debt financing in approximate 50-50 ratio following the confirmation of the DCO. Now, what about your next steps? Well, with the application now accepted, the project moves firstly into the pre-examination stage where members of the public are able to register as an interest party and make a relevant representation, a summary of their views, made in writing. An examining authority will also be appointed and all interest parties invited to attend a preliminary meeting. This stage usually takes place approximately three months from acceptance, so it's expected to conclude at the end of April this year. For the main examination phase, the planning expectorate is up to six months, and it's during this phase that interest parties are invited to provide more details of their views. Consideration um, is given by the examining authority to all the important and relevant matters, including interest parties, representations, any supporting evidence submitted and answers provided to the examining authority's questions. And following this, the planning expert will prepare a resort on the application on the relevant Secretary of State, including a recommendation within three months at close to the examination stage. And the Secretary of State then has a further three months to make the decision on whether to ultimately grant the refuse or development concept. An initial recommendation is therefore expected by the end of February 2022, and a final decision is by the end of May 
2022. Once a decision has been issued, there is a six week period in the, which the decision may be challenged in the High Court under judicial review. The whole process is therefore expected to last around 16 months, but could range from 12 to 18 months depending on the time taken to complete each stage. A lot of information to take in this video. The article's linked in the description down below if you didn't get any of that. But overall, I'm just happy this is going ahead for, so far. And now we can breathe, ladies and gentlemen, thrill seekers of all ages. That is all the information on the DCO and the planning application, the 25,000 page document on the London Resort. Oh, what a video. Um, not really much I can explain on that or expand on all of that. This is just an information video, just sharing all the information. But all I can say is, please, if you're watching this and you're in charge of, you know, accepting or refusing this project, please accept it. We've been waiting for, we've been waiting since 2012, 2011, 2012 to see this happen. And now we're getting so close. 2022 will be the year we get the final decision on the London Resort and then if it goes ahead you can bet your lucky backsides that Coast to Chell YouTube channel will do their absolute best to be there. I'll do my best to be there in 2024 on the opening day of the London Resort and check all this stuff out. In the meantime we'll keep covering updates on this, we'll keep following developments on the different stages of exception or rejection and examination and for now guys my name is Coaster Chow, keep living the coastal life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a London-tastic day. Come on, let's have this project going ahead.